Hi friends, welcome to day two of our Irresistible Med Cruise on Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady. Today we are docked in Toulon, France, and we have an incredible port adventure booked, taking us to Port Grammont and Saint-Tropez. Later, back on the ship, we try out the Asian food-themed night in the galley and take part in a secret speakeasy event deep in the ship. And we are bringing you along. Let's go! Ahoy friends, we are in Toulon, France, in the French Riviera. Um, we just went upstairs to the galley, had a little breakfast, it was great. And now we're going to head down to the SIP lounge, I think, on deck 7 to meet our group for the excursion. So, so come along with us and we'll show you what we get up to today. A lot of painters lived in Saint Tropez until World War II, but Van Gogh traveled to Arles in 1988 and he lived a little bit more than two years in Arles and its surroundings and he was so impressed by the colors he discovered here in Provence that he was the initiator of the Expressionism. So our first stop of the expedition is Port Grimaud. It's a little bit outside of Saint-Tropez. It's a little village with lots of canals and stuff. So we uh, have a little bit of time to look around. And then in a short while, we're going to take a boat, a group kind of electric boat through the different canals and see more of uh, the architecture and this little village. It's absolutely beautiful. We have around 45 minutes to explore Port Grimaud before we need to meet back up with the group. It's a beautiful little village with a smattering of small shops and restaurants. It doesn't take long to visit, but we got a nice bit of ice cream and we are enjoying the views. It's wild how almost everything is on the water here. up with our group and now we're on a small boat tour of the area. The guide isn't giving any information so we're just enjoying all the views. For the second stop of our excursion, we are in beautiful Saint-Tropez on the Côte d'Azur in southern France. And everything you've heard about this place is absolutely true. It is incredibly beautiful, full of so much money. Just the watercraft here alone, it's just incredible amounts of money. But it's beautiful, and I can see why people come here. There is an area with tons of restaurants and cafes. There are shops, all your designer luxury brands. There's beautiful ocean views. It's just an incredible place. I'm so glad we got to come here today. Oh my God. Look at that alligator, that's awesome. Love that. On the bus here, our tour guide told us about the famous cafe in Saint-Tropez, Cafe Santa Croix. So first, I think we're gonna check that out for lunch. We were told to just look for the iconic red awnings. 
We just had a delicious lunch at Cafe Senequa. Um, it definitely is not cheap, but that's what happens apparently when you're in Saint Tropez. Um, it's 125 years old and started as a patissier. Um, really good. I had a lovely rose that was. Uh, made three kilometers away from here uh, at the cheap price of 21 euros for a glass so that for sure lasted the whole time. Uh, Tori went big with a filet. I had a delicious salad. Um, overall, we were able to experience some piece of history. Was it worth 175 euro lunch? No, but now we can say we did it and I drank rosé in Saint-Tropez, so done. Saint-Tropez's inner streets are narrow and beautiful, and in part filled with expensive shops and restaurants. While we aren't doing any shopping, we are still really enjoying exploring this beautiful coastal town. So my first critique of the Virgin ship is going to be the lack of free soft serve. That's clearly going to Disney in a big major win in their category. Therefore I had to buy soft serve here in Saint Tropez. And of course their vanilla had just run out. So I had to get the chocolate instead. I know I sacrifice for each and every one of you, um, but the ice cream situation on Virgin, you do get um, there is free ice cream, but it is not soft serve. It just, it doesn't hit home like soft serve on a cruise. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this chocolate, which does hit the spot, but it is probably about 3000 degrees Celsius here. So it's melting all over my hand. Okay, we're back on the ship after an amazing day in Port Grimaud, Port Grimaud and Central Bay. It was so much fun, it was so beautiful, it was so hot. We were absolutely like zonked from the heat. It took almost two hours to get back because of traffic, but we're back on the ship now. We had uh, dinner reservations at six at the wake, but I just canceled them because we had such a big lunch. Uh, we're gonna skip that. We're gonna hit the pool for a little bit, and we might hit the Asian buffet. They're doing a special Asian nights buffet on the sailing, so um, we might go do that tonight. See how it goes. Asian Night Market at Sea is one of Virgin's 2024 Eat and Drink Festival events. For our sailing during nights two and six, all the different counters in the galley were serving different Asian themed foods. Things like dumplings, noodles, skewers, and other street style food. 
In addition, there were a couple of special cocktails for purchase. Unfortunately, All right, so we're at the end of a pretty fun evening, I would say. Um, after the pool time, we decided to go to the galley for some dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight, they had their Asian night, which was... Disappointing. Dis yeah, disappointing is a good word. It was not great. Okay. Some of the food was okay. Like, if you go to the noodle stand, like, the noodles were pretty good. But, like... That was the only one. Yeah, like um, the buns and 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 noodle. Uh, was it the buns and the um, dumplings? Dumplings and dumplings. Yeah. yeah, the dumplings were very like they tasted almost raw, is what it kind of felt like, and it just felt like they had been cooked earlier and then kind of left to simmer. Um, and then I had gone up to get fresh buns, and then she was like, "Come back in five minutes." I went back; they weren't ready, and I was like, "Tori gave them a less than stellar." review so we just skipped it at that yeah. point so it was pretty disappointing in my yeah. opinion in general the galley is much better when it's not asian night yeah and i think that's some people we talked to tonight also said that they heard that that in the past has been the case so yeah that the noodle place was the only place to go to yeah for that so yeah, yeah. live and learn it was free so or included in the in the cruise so we didn't pay anything for it yeah Fine. so if you can make other plans for asian night Maybe do so. Yeah, we won't go on Saturday when we originally planned to go. But, uh, so then after that, when we first got on the ship, uh, we saw on the, the app they had a thing for a speakeasy. You know, a super secret, hush hush, speakeasy. It was 35 bucks a person. And so, like, yeah, that sounds fun. Let's, let's sign up for that. And so, yeah, tonight we did. And, um, yeah, they, they make it all hush-hush, but it's really not hush-hush because it's, in, it's in, the, in the app, so you know what it, it, it's available. I mean, we don't know if everyone sees it, though. So, like, it might only be select people get the offer. Like, that's what we don't know. Yeah, true, I guess. So either way, it was a smaller, intimate group of, like, 20 people. It was less than that. It was, like, maybe 12 people. Okay, 12. But anyway, so a bartender from Barcelona uh, joined the ship, this, and it was his first time on the ship doing this. And we were taken downstairs on the deck five to the very front of the ship into like a really cool space where like people have signed the walls. There's the keel coin is in there. There's like some portholes. You can see the, the chains for the see anchors. The chain for the anchor on two different sides. And we walked through the crew area. So we made sure to be super quiet because you could actually see people wrote on their door that they were doing like bridge watch or anchor watch and they needed quiet. So like... It was really cool to be behind the scenes. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, we got three drinks. Uh, we met, talked to the bartender. It was a lot of fun. I will say, if you get the chance to do the speakeasy, if, if you see it on the app or whatever, well worth the $35 they charge. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. We got three, like, full drinks. Yeah. That were, like, gin, whiskey, tequila-based for the most part. Yeah. So the bartender was from Barcelona. He has a a cocktail bar, like a, a well-renowned cocktail bar called Dr. Stravinsky's, I think. I think they said also, like, number one in the world. At We're going to have to Google that. At least in Barcelona. Yeah. But, uh, no, it was fantastic. It was really, really good. Very good drinks. Everybody had a good time. It was really fun meeting people, so... We met some Peloton people. Shout out, Gail. <laughs> I got to talk about Peloton and running. And six of the people in that room were from the Massachusetts area. So I was in my element at that point yeah. as well. It's a small world sometimes. Yeah. And? And? There was two chances to get a special prize. And you know that I am competitive enough to go for it. So I was able to get this very special button as one of only three people tonight that got it for the Dr. Stravinsky, which is the name of the speakeasy. No, it's the name of the bar in Barcelona. Sorry, name of the bar in Barcelona. Um, and I was one of three to get it, so I am part of a very inclusive club. Very inclusive. We've had some fun drinks tonight. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think we're going to call it a night. We're going to get some sleep. Tomorrow morning we're up early. We're going to go to Santa Margarita uh, for the day, so... We will see you in the morning. Time to eat pizza. Bye. Ciao.